this kind of just came in. Somebody just posted it and says that they announced it artificial intelligence. Well, I picked up on it because I'm thinking what some people mean by this is, uh-oh, CMS is saying there's artificial intelligence out there. My job is going to be replaced because we hear this quite often. We hear somebody say, oh, I was at some convention or some dinner or some function and somebody said that, you know, this is taking over. Well, so let's, before we all jump and start going, oh no, I'm losing my job, I better go learn something new, let's investigate what this is. So I just thought it'd be really interesting just to bring you some more information about it so people aren't freaking out when they hear Medicare is authorizing artificial intelligence. Well, the first thought is, yes, it's going to take over our job. We're not going to have a job, but we already do have computer-assisted coding. And if you're somebody who uses computer-assisted coding in your field or in your work, you know, it's not always very good. I mean, it can do some things, but it can pick up everything. And we all know from reading a medical record, we can understand that doctor's thought process, but he kind of forgot a few things. So if we have a computer reading that documentation, it's going to look a little bit different because we may have to do some of our own human interpretation in there. So someone still has to write the code for that computer-assisted program. Maybe you can use your coding skills and maybe you're a good little IT whiz. Um, somebody has to audit the chart. If the computer read that chart, you can't have another computer go back behind it and read it. It's going to come up with the same thing. So we still need humans to be able to audit those charts. And how are we going to teach these providers that they're doing it wrong after we audit it? We still need humans to be able to do that too. So a lot of things are not going to be replaced, even if this AI that we're talking about is going to come in and totally change medical coding. So will I take over? Well, AI, artificial intelligence. So another thought is that people are like, oh, it's going to, you know, it's not going to take over. But right now, it should be there to help us. So we can work together with artificial intelligence. It can be used as a backup for our coding. Double check behind us. We talked about that back technique uh, that making us a little bit quicker. Well, if we have a computer that can go over us, because how many of us have made mistakes? Is your job based upon your error rate or maybe um, your pay level or something like that based upon error rates? Well, if you have a 5% error rate, that's kind of high. So if you have a computer that can go back behind you and double check things, that's what those scrubbers do when we send out our claims. In the claims payment process, a scrubber is looking at that going, no, wait a minute, you can't have those two things together, okay? So don't worry about that either. We are human, we are going to make mistakes, so maybe having a computer along with us might not be so bad. But what this is talking about is something a little bit different. So there was a press release, so let's take a look at what it said. So we're going to, um, the CMS, um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, came out. Here's the link to their press release. So this came out October 31st. They had 25 participants out of 300 entries that they picked for a challenge brought about by this new government initiative, brought out by um, President Trump. And I do have a link at the bottom that can bring you to more about more information about this AI initiative that the government is getting into. So, because there's other countries that use a lot more AI than we do, and they're a little bit more advanced. So we'd like to bring the United States up to par a little bit. So they're looking to aid clinicians in predicting health outcomes. How can we keep these patients healthy? If we know A, B, C, and D, then that equals E, right? So this is what we're looking at, using AI to read all this data, to interpret everything, and aid the clinicians. So this is one of the reasons for it. The purpose was to increase the value. And if you've ever heard me talk about anything, this patient without paperwork initiative is increasing the value. We went from PQRS to MIPS. So MIPS is all about cost, quality, providing value of care. So we want to increase that value and reduce patients' expenses because, you know, they're getting a lot of things done. Are they getting better? Are we being beneficial in what we're doing? So we want to create quality care. So the challenge was to refine these 
algorithms, which pretty much everything's based upon math and computer numbers, and it all works together in some program. So they want to use the data sets that are currently out there with Medicare and try and um, find a program that can do that. And actually, there was a monetary prize. So out of the 300 people who applied, or companies, corporations, and they're not just in healthcare, that put in for their idea, 25 have been selected. So that is the reason behind this. Um, this uh, uh, news release. So if we go down a little bit more, so if that still doesn't kind of sound right to you, well the challenge is, and this was a quote, is an opportunity for innovators to demonstrate their AI tools like deep learning or neural networks that can be used to predict unplanned hospital and skilled nursing facility admissions and adverse events. So they're trying to decrease the amount of um, hospital admissions and, and skilled nursing that people have, how can we decrease some of the expenses that are going from the insurance and from the patient? So they want to investigate these predictors and these different methodologies that, that can predict what's going to happen. So some of these solutions, these are just the titles, and I just thought they were pretty interesting. Leveraging AI to predict and improve health outcomes, maximize quality improvement, and reduce costs. Okay. AI for explainable adverse event prediction, empowering beneficiaries and providers to improve health outcomes. Okay, now we're working together. Now we're collaborating. We need the patients to tell us exactly what's going on and make sure the physicians are getting it. Using AI to improve Medicare population health. If you know anything about population health, smoking, cities of high chemical output, things like that, what's affecting the population? and our health outcome, optimizing ambulatory scheduling and reducing adverse events at hospitals. And another one was a human machine solution to enhance delivery of relationship-oriented care. I liked that one. I thought that sounded pretty cool. I mean, these are companies like 3M, Northrop Grumman. Some of these are some major companies that you went Northrop Grumman, okay, they in my area, they produce all of our jet planes that fly overhead here next to my base. So I mean, this is now they're getting into the healthcare field using all that knowledge that they have from some of their employees and bringing it to the healthcare field. So it's pretty interesting. If you want to know a little bit more about this AI government initiative that they have, I um, produced a link here as well. It gives a lot of information in there. A little bit more than this, it re repeats some of the names of these um, papers that people presented. But I thought it was pretty interesting to think how we can grow in our healthcare field. Where are we going to? Now remember that the US Department of Labor Statistics still says from 2014 to 2024, coders are gonna double in size, okay? So it is still a growing field and they're predicting it will be a growing field just from a couple years ago. So don't worry, we're not gonna be replaced just yet. Not in my lifetime, I'm not looking at. So and I just had a birthday last week. I still got a long ways to go, so. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.